Welcome to Freebie Friday. This is episode number seven. And today, I want to talk to you about character driven plot lines or character driven writing. We're going to find out what exactly it is and how to write this way. So stick around. In case you don't know, there are two generally accepted methods of writing. There is the character-driven writing style and the story-driven writing style or plot-driven. Um, first off, we need to define what they are, how they're different. Character-driven is a more free-form creative thinking style of writing. It focuses on the characters, obviously, but it focuses on the characters' emotions or their imagination um, and the conflicts and the struggles that the characters face and the growth that they go through in the course of the story is usually 80 to 90 percent internal. So it's things that actually happen to the character, not a result of being in the environment that the character is in. On the other hand, the plot-driven or story-driven writing style is usually more factual-based. Uh, and I don't mean like a biography or a true story, but it, the environment and the world that the story takes place in is more acceptably acknowledged by the reader um, you know both styles can be science fiction for example but the world in a plot driven story is more readily accepted by the reader as okay I can see that you know it's it's like another earth or it is earth um, but the the characters go through struggles that are more external and this means that they have things happen around them that they have to deal with but when you think about this style of writing you have to imagine that whatever it is that's going on that the character is struggling with or fighting through would happen whether that character was there or not so as an example uh, a divorce a divorce would be a character driven style because it is a conflict, an emotional battle, uh, as well as a physical one, that the character is going through. You know, whereas a bomb going off in a mall somewhere wouldn't necessarily affect your main character if your main character wasn't even in that town. But the bomb is still there and it's still going to go off. So when you think of the two story or writing styles that, that are accepted, those are the main differences. So how do we write a character driven story? Um, the easiest way is to get to know character driven storylines and understand what they are. Read a lot of the character driven books that are out there. A few examples would be like uh, the classics, Catcher in the Rye, or The Great Gatsby. Um, also, another great one to read if you're wanting to learn this style is The Joy Luck Club. Uh, the seven characters in there are all masterfully created, and they all have their own struggles and, and growth to go through. And the way that it's done, it really sets apart this style of writing versus the, the plot driven or story driven st style. So when you sit down to write a character driven storyline, you want to focus on a microscopic view of your characters. Um, you know, I always stress that you want to make your characters real people, 
to the reader. You want them to be believable. And this should go into any style of writing. But in a character driven, we need this. It has to happen. You need to be able to convey to your reader why they need to love this character or hate them. And it can't just be a, oh, I don't really care what happens to him either way. Because then you're not going to be able to draw them into the story. Since your story revolves around this character, if the reader isn't fully engaged with this character, the rest of the story is going to fall apart. Because the rest of the story really is flat. And most character-driven books, the external things that happen are two-dimensional. And they don't really mean much. There isn't a lot of detail and description to draw you into the world. The, the focus then is to draw you into the character. And one way you do this is to use the cause and effect. And you just use it on the character instead of the environment. Um, but when there is a choice to be made, you want your character to have to make that choice. Um, it doesn't always have to be a life and death situation. These can be small struggles, you know, um, and they don't need to always make the right choice. Have your characters make wrong choices. Have them have the consequences of those wrong choices. This will make them imperfect, and it'll make them more relatable to the reader. Not everybody makes the right choice all the time, so your character shouldn't either. You know, um... You want to also make sure that when you're writing this way, that you do have external threats. Like I said in the beginning, it's only about 80 to 90 percent of these struggles and, and growth that the character goes through is internal. There has to be something external, and it has something has to be worthwhile for the character to even be in the position that they're in. You know, writing a story with your main character who never leaves the sofa probably not going to be the greatest story you need to get them out into the world as flat as it needs to be or is but make them interact with other people and the environment around them and, and give them little struggles that are more story driven just to kind of tie everything together good example of this uh, if you haven't read it I recommend that you do uh, Stephen King's The Tommyknockers this one you have three main character groups you have the two main characters Bobby and James and then you have the townsfolk and when Bobby uncovers the, the spacecraft for the first time it starts to have an effect on the entire town and as she continues to dig, Bobby herself becomes obsessed with the unearthing of this craft. And it has to be done. It has to be done. It takes a mental toll. It takes a physical toll. It takes an emotional toll on Bobby herself. And she goes through a lot of changes, both mentally and physically. The townsfolk are also starting to be controlled, mind control doing things that they normally wouldn't do, saying things they normally wouldn't say, killing people, for example. And you see these as, a, you know, the townspeople as a group, as, as a, a group of characters, but it's like a one character. And then there's James, who also has his own internal struggles. He's a recovering alcoholic. He has violent tendencies but he's also the only one that can save the town. He's not affected by, you know, the, the alien craft. And so he can see what's going on, and he has to make the decision to make these changes. So he has more of the external conflicts than anybody else does. But it'll show you, reading this story, a great way to have these external conflicts while you're focusing more on the internal ones. So when we think about the character-driven line, some of the, the better features for this is that you end up with really great characters. They're highly engrossing. Everybody's interested in them. 
there is no middle of the road. You either love them or hate them. You want them to succeed and you're rooting for them or you want them to fail and you're rooting against them. And whatever it is, whenever that happens, whether they succeed or they fail, your readers will actually have a sense of satisfaction from that because these characters are so evolved and they're so real that they can't help but pull for them. Um, the, the problem with the character-driven plotline is that most of the time the plots are easily predictable. They're pretty simple, they're straightforward, there isn't a whole lot of unexpectedness. And, you know, I can hear you out there thinking, hey, shouldn't every story have great characters and a great storyline? And the answer is yes, but you should strive for one or the other, especially in the beginning of your writing career. Doing both is very, very difficult. I mean, if, if you think about it, you can imagine trying to come up with a plot line that is so deep, full of twists and turns, you know, full of the resolutions, the unexpected. That in itself is very difficult. Doing the same thing with a character to make them a believable, life-like person for the reader is also very difficult. And when you have the two very difficult things, meshing them together becomes near impossible. I'm not saying it is impossible. It has been done. Uh, there are quite a few that are very, very well done. Uh, the Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin, and uh, The Game of Thrones is one that you get involved with the characters heavily but the storyline itself is very intricate and Lord of the Rings is the same way so it can be done but don't focus so much on that so if we're focusing on a character driven storyline which will help you in the future develop your characters for other stories a lot easier then you want to forget about your plot line so we'll do a little exercise I got for you. Uh, practice writing a character-driven plot line. So, okay, we're going to come up with a story. But we're not focusing on the story. We're focusing on the character. So we're going to do a little outline. I want you to do an outline of a short story. Not a full-length novel. But in each scene... When you're doing your outline, make each scene about the character. You want to think about what the character is going to go through in that scene. Every scene for this short story, for this, this practice here, should have some type of internal or emotional struggle. Uh, it doesn't have to be resolved in the same scene. The smaller ones can. Um, but focus on these struggles, these internal conflicts. Uh, for example, maybe your character has to give a, a big speech. And they're not very good at you know, public speaking. And, and they're very nervous. And they have to overcome all this. So they don't get up there and stutter and stammer and uh, you know, forget their words. And so that could be the big one. And then you have these other little things that maybe come along. Um, another one, uh, like I mentioned on earlier, is the going through a divorce. That one is easily recognizable. It might be something that you can you can work into your story because there is a lot of internal conflict going on with that, especially if your main character is the one that does not want the divorce. So there's that conflict with the other spouse. When you're writing these outlines you're going to have to have an environment. There is going to have to be a world that your characters live in. But the focus is on the character and not the world. So you want to build enough of the environment that the reader knows where to place these characters. They're not just free floating out in the abyss. But you want to make sure that you have enough detail for this to happen, but leave out the detail that's going to really draw the reader into the environment. Uh, for example, 
if you are putting your character in a house and there is a table lamp that gets knocked over just tell them they knocked the table lamp over you don't need to say what kind of lamp it was and that it was plugged in and had a 60 watt bulb and a silk chandelier uh, you know lampshade that shattered on impact and caused the dog to scurry under the couch you don't need to do that for this we're just going to write that the lamp got knocked over and that will bring the focus back to the character how do they react to this lamp being broken now so once you have your outline go back over it and make sure that each scene has something that focuses directly on the character that's in that scene and then write it out write out the short story and when you're done writing it out it doesn't have to be perfect it's going to be a rough draft it's going to be crap but just write it out and when you're done read it over and make sure that it's something that focuses directly on the character has enough environmental factors and external struggles to make it a story and then give it to somebody to read and see what they think about it and when you're all done head over to the extradraft.com to the freebie Friday page click on the link for the forum you'll find the link to episode 7 and tell us how your story came out. Tell us how you did. If you want to post the whole story or a link to it, go ahead and do that too. But focus on your characters for a character-driven story with enough environmental aspects to make it believable and for the reader to place the characters somewhere, but not so much focus that it takes away from the characters. And as you practice this more and more, you will get better. So stop by, let us know how you do, and we'll see you next week. Until then, have fun and write words. Mm -hmm.